Spirit with your sight. You see, touch, if I touch this, there's a type of, of occupation that occurs. My body has occupied this physical space. The same occurs with the eye. If I look at a woman, my eye can occupy her body. And Allah is saying, that is not your property. And therefore, keep out. It's private property. And the sign is the hijab. That is saying, private property. Do not enter. That's what the hijab is. When you see that sign, you're supposed to respect the sign. ذَلِكَ أَذْنَا أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا فَلَا يُعْذَيْنَا That when Allah says that they should put the jalabib, right, on, it is because that is more appropriate that they should be known and not harmed. So the whole point of the hijab is to protect a woman's private space because that space is not the right of a man to trespass against. And so unfortunately, one of the things about foolish people is if they have big houses... See, this is one of the beauties of Islam. If you go to Muslim cultures, do you know how Muslim houses were made? They were made by making them outwardly ugly and inwardly beautiful. You go to Fez and you walk around Fez. And Fez is one of the ugliest cities you'll ever see as you walk down the streets. All the houses look like they're about to fall apart. You step into the door of those houses and suddenly you're in a garden. It's all tiled. It's all beautiful. Why do you think the Muslims did that? Because they knew the power of envy in the world. They knew the power of the evil eye. They knew the power of putting out the blessings that Allah has given you and showing them off. Because once you do that, you create a situation where there are bad people out there that are going to harm you. They can harm you just by their eye, by looking with envy at something that Allah has given you. And that is why if Allah has made you beautiful, part of the modesty of that gift is not to display that beauty in any arrogant way. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you wealthy, it is not to flaunt that wealth. This does not mean that a wealthy man wears rags. But the point is a wealthy man should not be doing ostentatious displays of wealth, like jewelry all over. See, women in traditional Muslim cultures, they don't wear their jewelry outside. They cover that up. That jewelry is for their friends. It's for uh, their family, it's for their husbands, it's for themselves. Because they're allowing you into their private space and they trust because you're a friend, you're not going to have malintent when you look at them. You'll appreciate something. And that's one of the gifts when somebody comes into your house. See, if I have a guest, I show them my manuscripts. I have manuscripts. I have a Quran that was written several hundred years ago. By hand, I have a first edition of George Sale's Quran. These are some of the most precious things that I have. When somebody comes in my house, I like to show them those things as a way of honoring them as well. Of just saying, this is the most precious thing I have, and I want to share that with you. And that's a very human thing to do, to want to share what is precious with those that are close to you. But you have to beware of showing what is precious to those who you don't know. Because there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's different types of people out there. And so that is what this is all about. It's about protection and protecting women. And so that's what I was saying about houses. That in, in the Muslim world, the Muslims did not display their houses from the outward. They displayed them from the inward. And that is what a woman does. She's like that house. Her, her beauty is interiorized. And she allows into that beautiful space, the ones that she chooses that are permissible and also from her family members, the friends from amongst women and then the male maharim. Those are the people that she trusts and enters, allows into that private space. 
So in this culture, the idea is if you've got it, flaunt it. Some of the most miserable people in this culture, and if you do studies, and I know a psychiatrist that worked with bulimia and anorexia and these problems that are often related to women, and she told me that some of the most severe cases that she'd ever seen were from models, professional models, which were very beautiful women. All they were told since they were little is how beautiful they were. And one of the things they do in Mauritania with the children, they say, you're so ugly, you're so ugly. <laughs> They, they do it very sweetly, but they, they don't like the idea of always telling children how beautiful they are to create a type of conceit. But obviously, I wouldn't advise saying you're so ugly. I mean, they seem to survive it psychologically, but a lot of people are devastated by that. 